What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 2 of a story where Issei fused with office and becomes the true dragon god of truth and hope. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 2. The sun rose and the four Long Inus's users woke up from their sleep. Lavinia was relieved she had someone who will care for who she was not what she has. Issei hoped Lavinia and Vali did not fight and got along. Though Bio was happiest he has ever been, he wasn't consistently on the run from the cow's brigade for a week, since office fused with Issei leaving the brigade in the process which is not his fault. He was excited as well knowing Issei something interesting something is going to happen. Ingvold was happy she was with people who cared for her, well she was an angle in devil skin, a leviathan to bode everyone was confused how someone so pure is a devil of all races. Well Issei knew she and Asia will get along quite well. Well what's the plan today? Tobio asked he was in an upbeat mood. Suddenly a floating lowly appears right next to him, Tobio being the jumpy guy he is is scared shitless, he jumps on top of the branch on the tree next to him and clings to it like a cat, all while giving a scream that sounded like a little screaming on top of her lungs during a horror movie. The office smirked somewhat proud of what it has accomplished, Lavinia was giggling, Ingvold turned to the tree to hide her amused grin she did not want to seem rude, and Issei was nodding his head in disapproval of the actions of office, but clearly is amused by its entrance. Every since office woke up it was able to show emotions, while well, Issei's emotional state was more controlled, that is why he was not emotional broken or scarred mentally as well. So you finished what you wanted to do office. Issei started the conversation giving Tobio can recover. Yes, well you're working fast on getting mates, you got two of the top 10 most beautiful women in the world, apparently this list was created by Zeus, Odin and Azazel, many supernatural beings also agree on who the list comprises. It was something like that. The office nods its head. Lavinia added her two cents. Yes, I hold the third position with Vali Lucifer holding fourth place. I am known as the most beautiful human woman well I am no more human, but, many men would be jealous of you. Taking two of the top ten most beautiful women, especially since two of them are taken and one is an angel, Gabriel who doesn't take interest in relationships as well as the fallen angel, Penemu. Vali is also known as the most beautiful white dragon empress, so many men will consider you extremely lucky, but I think Vali and I can agree we are the luck ones. Lavinia said the last part whispering into his right ear and hugging his neck from behind, pressing her gifted chest onto his back, hearing a blush from the crimson hair boy. Lucky bastard. Even Drake was cursing him. Issei's jaw dropped a part of him wanted a harem, and now in a relationship with two of what the supernatural world most beautiful women among them top five are single, and he has two of them the third place and fourth place holders, his perverted tendencies kind of resurfaced. Tobio smacked Issei's head to get him out of the state of shock, sighing and regaining his composure. The supernatural world knows about your fusion with me, but they don't know my name. So got any destination for us? The office nodded her head before disappearing in a wisp of smoke. Don't worry I couldn't stay away longer since I do have a time limit to my avatar form, which does not possess my strength, but gives me very basic abilities which is a physical body, floating and teleportation. Anyway the hero faction is causing problems in Rome, I believe they are trying to disrupt the Vatican, for something which I am not sure, but we might find out. The office stated with a black gem glowing from Issei's left hand where Drake usually speaks from. So we are going against the cow's brigade now? Well we can consider it payback Tobio was first to voice his thoughts. Issei needs a solid debut. I won't settle for less. Lavinia smiled she wasn't going to back down so easily. I agree with Lavinia Ni Ice Nai needs a solid debut. Seems Ingvold held a lot more courage than her shy demeanor led on. Well then let's say hi to the lord shall we? Issei was slightly battle thirsty, well he is a dragon plus he wanted to fight. Time skip to Rome brought to you by Ichibi Issei's nose bleeding, imagining a naked volley and Lavinia with Drag sighing, knowing he will be a pervert no matter what. The team arrived some meters outside of the Vatican of course hidden to the eye of the public. Lavinia wanted to learn how Issei can do that. Well it was something he gained after his fusion with office. Well that was until they sensed four angels coming their way, one high tier, one mid tier and two low tier in terms of strength, the high tier angel will give Issei a challenge in his base form, but he will overpower him with his long -iness. Well, I sensed foreign presence here one guy could probably beat me. I wonder who that is. A handsome young man with blonde hair, green eyes, and dressed in priest clothes, said he had a chocolate bar in his hand. There are four people here I can recognize two of them, Ikus Tobio and Lavinia Rinai. The other is a half-devil with a potentially long inus tier sacred gear rivaling your Dulio A sister, with the appearance of a woman in her late twenties or early thirties with blue eyes. The now identified Dulio stated. The crimson guy is strong I cannot say what he is, but I can tell he is not human. 
Griselda, I don't think they mean harm. Plus since the lavender one is half devil they cannot be associated with devils or fallen for that matter of fact. Let's ask them. You know we can hear you right. Issei cut Dulio off he was kind of irritated. But you are right we are no threat. We came to inform you and well help you about something, but before we do can we get some introductions down. Whoa blue haired angle calm down we are not here to fight you. Issei continued in a polite manner, pointing out blue haired girl glaring at him. Moving forward and bent down at the hip to come in line with the blue haired girl's face, she had a green strand of hair and golden eyes darker than his left eyes color she backed away a little bit slightly angered a smirk formed on Issei's face. Never thought I would see the wielder of Durandal here. Issei's smirk was still up on his face. Everyone present was shocked at what Issei said, Issei's group was shocked since he sensed something they couldn't showing his level. While the angles were shocked he was able to sense something Dulio couldn't sense the crimson-haired guy was probably stronger than Dulio, hopefully this was false. Issei's head perked up again and saw a chestnut-haired girl with long twin tails and violet eyes, his eyes widen in recognition. Bring chan Issei's voice was filled with disbelief. You know me. But I don't know you, and the only one who called me that is... Irina's eyes widened, and Issei gave a half-lidded kind smile he would give a good friend. Eyes she ran up and gave him a bear hugged him and buried her head in his chest, she was a good six inches shorter than him. She also missed him, sighing he patted her head. What happened to you? Why do you look like this? Why are not human? Why are you here? Ice what happened? Her mind was not functioning properly, she wanted to know why was he involved in the supernatural. Everyone was shocked these two people knew each other. One knew one but not the other, but for Lavinia she felt Issei's affection for her, his childhood friend the love of a brother she smiled placing a hand on Tobio's and Ingvald's shoulder, both of them saw Lavinia's smile. It is his childhood friend. Remember that he told us about. Griselda, Dulio and the blue-haired girl heard them, and their eyes widened their eyes further. Both Issei and Irina separate from their hug what the blue-haired girl said shocked Issei this time. You are the revered Haidu Issei. What? You know what tell me two things your name and why am I called revered Hyde you say. Issei looks at Arena with a what the hell have you been up to? Look. Well my name is Zenovia Korda, Queen of Michael. Friend of Arena. You are called revered Hyde you say, since you are a legend told by Arena of her childhood friend, who could control her obsession with the Bible, with the ability to make her read other books. It is said to be impossible to make her read other books, even when the other angels try nobody could accomplish even Lady Gabriel, and Lord Michael could not accomplish it. Not even the strongest exorcist Dulio Jesualdo and the scariest angel Griselda Corda, my legal guardian could accomplish the legendary feat. Tobio was smiling in amusement, Lavinia was giggling, so was Ingvald. Issei was rubbing his forehead like he got the worst headache ever, he was sighing multiple times, as well as shaking his head in disapproval. Irina was sheepishly rubbing her head and looked nervous. Issei flicked Irina's forehead making her clutching it and glaring at Issei which Issei rose a brow at. Mom was right to be worried when you moved away. She thought you wouldn't read other books looks like she was right. She can manage her money, right? The last sentence was full of desperation Zenovia shook her head as if saying no, she cannot. Issei sighed for the fifteenth time in the last minute. I will give you a reading list you better read them. Zenovia do me a favor if she doesn't read them tell me. Irina you mostly will like them, read them, in a month I want you to read them all of them no excuses. Zenovia nodded her head neither angel believed Irina would agree until. Yes sir. Irina gave a salute like a soldier. Shocking all of the angels present that Irina agreed so easily, Issei was a true legend among heaven for all the comedic reasons. After recovering from the shock, everyone introduced themselves with Issei's team being shocked, Dulio was wielding Zenith Tempest the second strongest Longinus, and the angels being shocked on who Issei was actually. All of them are currently seated in a restaurant with a mountain of plates on Dulio and Issei's side, while Dulio was full Issei was still on dessert, shocking the angels on someone out ate Dulio, building Issei's comedic legend even more. So what brings you here? I doubt you will be here randomly. Griselda started coming to the purpose of the meeting. The four offices fusion with me, it wanted to kill Great Red so, a lot of people including a group of humans dependents of historical heroes, the old Satan faction and others which I am unaware of came together and banded into a group called Cow's Brigade. The hero faction is led by Cow Cow Ancestor shares the same name wielder of True Longinus. He let the information sink in before a reaction could come he continued. The group also has George wielder of Dimension Lost and Leonard the wielder of Annihilation Maker. Those three along with I believe Jean Dark and Hercules are planning to attack the Vatican for some unknown purpose. We don't know the time as well, but it is likely late night today or early tomorrow. My team wants to stop them consider it revenge since Tobio, Lavinia and Ingvold were cornered by them and a descendant of the old Beelzebub. 
The angels were shocked, but the relations should be built before they could inform them, since they were complete strangers. How about we get the information directly to the Seraphs, but have people on standby, since if we have more people it would too obvious we know of the attack. If we knew their intention things would be easier but we don't. So having my team and I along with you guys should hold out till we can figure out their intentions, then distribute to people in the standby accordingly we are 5 Longinus's users, the wielder of Durandal and 2 other angels. All of the people nodded their heads in agreement to Visay's plan, it was too risky to have too many people at the same time. Time skip tonight at the Vatican brought to you by Chibi Issei, beating Chibi Cow Cow with a walking stick with Chibi Dulio crying because Issei ate more than him, with Chibi office enjoying the chaos in the background. Griselda came too to Issei's team and the two young angels. Dulio was nowhere in sight to which everyone rose a brow except Issei who understood the situation. Seems Dulio is more well known than I thought. Issei said aloud confusing the young angels, but his team understood as well. Dulio won't be coming since he is more well known than you guys. He also said not to worry since Issei is apparently as strong as him. Griselda came in and confirmed Issei's guess. Dulo is on standby, so Issei the burden is on Issei to hold them out. Smart move since the strongest can't be walking around when the attack might happen. Though I have already set up alarms around the area. Griselda nodded. Also Issei, Lady Gabriel wants to meet you for some reason. Presumably since she was the most interested in Arena's childhood stories more than anyone else. Issei gave a nod. Well let us start preparing shall we? We can't have our upcoming guest disappointed now can we? Issei smirked he wanted Pummel Cow Cow to the ground for what he did to Tobio and Lavinia. He also wanted to see what is so special about the true Longinus. As midnight reached teams of two patrolled around the area, Lavinia and Arena, Zenobia and Tobio, Ingvild and Griselda and Issei went alone. The alarms were laid and everything was ready now they have to wait. It was late into the night and the clock struck midnight. An alarm was set off on the north wing of the that is where Tobio was patrolling. Issei and others made their way there seeing Tobio already fighting with a scythe and Canis like in taking out hero faction members, Zenovia was wielding Durandal doing quite a bit of damage, seems she lacks control. Lavinia was casting magic spells and a 3 meter tall doll running around to bringing in winter, and Arena was with her two wings and using light spears. Griselda has six wings on her back killing faction members with light weapons, and Ingvold was using water-based attacks to trap the intruders with impressive control at that. Issei joined in with his fists knocking them out for interrogation. He notices Cow Cow, Leonard and George standing there. Cow Cow launches at Issei with his spear which Issei deflects by using his palm and changing the course of the attack. From behind Leonard's creations from his sacred gear attack him from behind. Annihilation Maker one of the original four high-tier longinus capable of destroying the world, capable of creating anti-monsters, this one is specific for dragons, fuck. Issei thoughts were cut off when he was thrown outside the walls of the Vatican. A thick pink fog surrounded the area with anti-monsters led by Cow Cow, came from Issei's left. They wanted to take him out. Dimension lost another high-tier longinus, how did Cow Cow get these people? Need to clear the fog. Hmm. Issei got up and then turned to face Cow Cow and the army of anti-monsters made to fight him. In the enemy environment and the odds against you not to mention the opponent has the true longinus well Issei grinned analyzing his situation. He is going to use that right. Yup. The office's deadpan voice and Drake's foreboding meant one of two things, the enemy had no clue what Issei can do or Issei was going to something stupid. Issei placed his palms together and interlocked his right hand only. Giving his legs a three feet distance and bending his knees slightly. Before creation comes destruction, before light comes darkness. Extinction technique. Ruin of extinction Issei's voice was calm and serious. Closing his left hand like he was holding a bottle, he brought it close to his mouth and out, stretching arm completely with his pinky and ring finger closed and middle finger, index finger and thumb in a position of holding something with the tip of his fingers. Purple lightning surrounded Issei. The large purple ball standing as tall the anti-monsters and wide as two of them standing side by side. Cow Cow jumped out on time sensing danger, but the anti-monsters weren't so lucky. All that was left could be described as a very deep fault line. Such destructive power. What the hell is he Cow Cow thought he needed to get close not to mention now that Cow Cow seriously needed to get close, otherwise it would be problematic. Cow Cow dashed to Issei at full power, while Issei was still in a dazed state. He swung his spear to cut Issei's right side, but Issei recovered instinctively using the boosted gear to block the spear. Here the Red Dragon Emperor Cow Cow yelled at Issei he was shocked to see the dragon who meddled was the host of Drag. Issei sighed, driving the intruders out would be easy. Welsh Dragon over boost. Balance Breaker. 
the tower of fire reaching so high that the end of it couldn't be seen from the ground, engulfed to say the fire was not ordinary, it was the fire that Drake was known for the fire that earned him the title of domination. Weaker people were reduced to their knees at the aura of domination, allies at awe and enemies gulped in fear. Drop hour cycle destroying no vaporizing the ground once where Cao Cao stood, speaking of Cao Cao, he got away from him as fast as he can. Scene change, at heaven. Michael practically drowned in his seat, remembering one of the two dragons that reduced their numbers so greatly. Uriel and Raphael were scared shitless hugging each other. The seraphs were never panicked as today. The aura reached all the way to heaven. The lone female in the room was the only one who was not panicking. Gabriel the prettiest woman in heaven and the sixth most beautiful woman on the top 10 most beautiful woman in the world list. Gabriel smiled she somehow found this aura peaceful and warm, she is a woman with blonde hair and eyes like a galaxy. Gifted figure and a cute face with a mixture of sexy and cute she stood at 5'11", she wore a white dress black vest and black leggings and white slip-on shoes. She wanted this aura to be near her, to comfort her and keep her warm. A dreamy smile appeared on her face and a small blush. The three other archangels stopped to notice Gabriel's expression, and their jaws dropped. Scene change, Mount Olympus's hunting grounds. A beautiful blonde woman with curls in front of her face blue eyes creamy white skin and a figure which makes many men drool over her, her face has delicate features. She wore bronze armor that showed her thighs, she stood at 5'9". She was the most beautiful goddess and ranked second in the top 10 most beautiful women list. She was the Greek goddess of the moon, hunting and chastity, Artemis. She lowered her bow and arrow so did her hunting group consisting of women of different races. The red dragon emperor of this generation is strong, Artemis said with no hint of emotion only awe. That is my ice. Seems he is stronger than I thought. Volley commented landing down she was currently in her balance breaker. The man you said I will fall in love with. Volley I respect you and treat you like a sister, but you should know. Before Artemis could say anything Volley cut her off. The ice went through much more worse than you did, and the culprit were two women, one of them mind you one of them is the younger sister of Mao Lucifer. Not to mention Issei has gotten past it. Men and women are beings with intelligence and feelings, so he had it worse than you, but managed to put it aside and move on. At least see who he is as a person. PCH, fine, but if he is a pervert I will kill him not caring if he is your mate. Bali nodded her head. Scene change, dimensional gap. Seems like that the person office is fused with his strong to make his aura reach here. I should pay a visit sometime. A giant red western dragon 100 meters in length with two pairs of wings and a single horn on the end of his head on his nose. He was known with a lot of titles, Apocalypse Dragon, True Red Dragon God Emperor, True Dragon, Dragon of Dragons, DXD, Dragon of Dreams, and the Glorious Red God of Dreams but his name was Great Red, one of the two strongest beings in the world. Scene change, unknown location. In a forest with tall trees, rocks and a clear stream water. This place couldn't be described in words it was always day here. It was the forest of life, the forest is so beautiful that God of the Bible, tried to replicate it in fourth heaven, and planted a tree which he brought from here. Yes this is the forest the legendary Garden of Eden was based on, and the Tree of Wisdom is a native tree found here. Well gods never come here for one reason, Trihiksa are commonly known as 666 resides here. Apocalyptic Beast, Empress Beast of Apocalypse she was also known as the most powerful and beautiful woman, and took the top spot on the top 10 most beautiful women list. She had silver hair coming down to her tailbone, pale skin, red eyes with slits like akin that of dragon, her face had sharp features and mature appearance, and she has a very very beautiful and sexy figure. She stood at 5'11". She had two purple horns on her head and a tail behind and pointy ears, a tight purple suit with various features, and the suit had a lighter shade towards the center. Um. The red dragon's aura reached here. Impressive. His aura also feels warm like. I wonder would he also call me. Monster she thought looking up into the sky. A smirk formed on her lips. I will visit soon Red Dragon. Let's see who you are to make the Ouroboros diffuse with you. Shall we? Scene change, Underworld. Serzichas and Grafia give each other a look and smile to say was doing alright which was relief. Ajuka walked in with a pained smile having a gut feeling knowing what might happen. A loud crash could be heard from a distance and Seraphol comes in with a broken wand and disheveled magical girl outfit. Serzichas. We must make sure that Red Gecko's host does not reach so tan, the Siskon proclaimed the last part a little too excitedly. All three people in the room sighed. This will take a while to calm down. Scene change, Vatican. The hero faction was sweating currently in front of them was a person clad in red armor with black highlights, and some spots were dark red, with green jewels. Tobio smirked this just got ten times better. Leave, now or perish. Issei's voice is draconic anyone who is weak-willed will piss their pants. 
At an instant hundreds of anti-monsters were created by Leonard and Cow Cow prepared himself. Boost. 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 Explosion. A large green orb formed in front of Issei and he punched it, causing a large beam of energy to shoot out at Engulf the anti-monster destroying them completely. Without another word Issei shot towards Cow Cow with a streak of dark crimson following him. Boost. 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 Cow Cow swung his spear, but missed Issei completely Issei punched him in the gut, lifting his feet of the ground and making him cough blood out after that Issei went up in the air and punched Cow Cow, who fell down at immense speed and hit the ground, causing a crater. He got out from the crater and groaned in pain his body hurt. Issei stood few feet from Cow Cow. Let's end here for today. Cow Cow said as Hercules, Jean, George, Leonard gathered near Cow Cow. Not so fast. As Issei said that he shot a dragon shot towards Cow Cow's head, Jean and Hercules stood in front of Cow Cow to protect him, but the shot turned and hit Cow Cow's left eye. Groaning in pain from losing his eye Cow Cow was pissed. Red Dragon Emperor Cow Cow shouted, soon enough he regained his composure. That stronger master offices power, then I will show you the true power of the spear. Cow Cow said these words as he disappeared in a magic circle. Issei deactivated Balance Breaker and sighed tilting his head he was slightly exhausted since it was his first time activating Balance Breaker. The job on handling three high tier Long Inus's users and none of the people from your side die. You did a great job as a leader as well. I agree you did well for your first real fight. After the compliments from the two dragons Issei smiled. The Vatican was damaged heavily from the, the attacks of Issei, but nobody died. Issei's smile turned into a frown, he turned to his right and released blue fire from his hand prison of frozen hell. The fire was not hot but cold, it was ice. A fallen angel with five wings black hair, red eyes, pointy ears. He wore a suit with purple shoulder pads and carried five swords with him. Who are you? Issei questioned. The Kabil, red dragon, Kukukuku in my hands is Excalibur fragments. See you. As that man said that and left. We won the battle but lost the war, huh? Issei mused. Time skipped to Issei and Gabriel brought to you by Rhea's getting jealous over Issei's harem and strength with Yudo and Asia, giving each other a high five. Issei is stilling on an couch. He and his team were brought to heaven to rest and recuperate well, they did bring a lot of attention, since there is a dragon and a half-devil in heaven. Issei is in deep thought. He wanted to find out Kakabiel's next move. He figured out Kakabiel wanted another great war, but he also knew Kakabiel needed three weeks to prepare. So he had time as well. Issei was brought a thought when Gabriel walked in the two only had a quick introduction and went back to business of dealing with the aftermath of the Vatican attack. Gabriel came and sat down beside Issei. You know, when you entered Balance Breaker the whole world found out about your strength. Michael drowned in his seat, Uriel and Raphael looked like two children watching horror movies. Gabriel giggled at Issei's shocked expression and remembering the events. Issei's heart skipped multiple beats if that was possible. Why am I feeling this way? Lavinia was because my hormones were still settling down, but why is it acting up with Gabriel? Issei questioned himself. Kukikuku, while well I sense three soulmates imprinted in your soul, I never imagined Gabriel to be one of them. Drake said aloud confusing Issei and Gabriel until office explained. Issei soulmates are mates that are marked when you're born it is rare instance. Once you meet your soulmate the connection formed will be like regular mates. You're a rare case with two of them. One can say you're the luckiest man on earth considering who the three soulmates are, Gabriel is one of them, but, I won't tell you the other two, since you would like things interesting. Issei understood office actually kept quit because it likes to surprise Issei a lot. Mates? Is it a dragon thing? Gabriel questioned with a cute tilt of her head and a curious expression. Why the hell is she so cute? Issei nearly lost his composure. Sighing he is going to have a very awkward conversation with Gabriel. The Kukikuku, the harem king strike again. Drake enjoyed his host situation very much. Shut up perverted dragon emperor. Drake Drake quickly shut up, not wanting to anger the dragon god, though his pride hurt a little, even though it was true. It has been around three weeks since that fight, Cow Cow lost his eye, and the red dragon emperor is well known among the supernatural faction. Issei grew closer to Gabriel, Vali and Lavinia. All three were willing to share Issei, Lavinia claimed Issei's lap, well Gabriel gets to be the only one she gets to hug him from his back, Vali got his first kiss and saw him before his looks changed, so she has permanently got a lifelong bonus with him. 
Artemis also kept an eye on Issei as she grew closer to him the more she interacted with him. Though she really wanted to kill Riaz after hearing his tale. Issei also met Penemu who he grew slight feelings to and vice versa. Penemu who is usually seductive was willing to kill Riaz. Issei also found out she was one of three soulmates so two down one to go. Issei's tale with his fusion with office and the events led up to it were well known as well. Riaz lost her status as heiress and territory, she was allowed to live there since she is friends with Sona. Well what she did was in devil laws her household treated their peerage like family, and plus they nearly had bad blood with both dragon emperors, would be a devastating blow, considering one of them is the Lucifer heiress, if it was not the save of Ajuka Beelzebub, then they should forget about having good relationship with the dragon emperors. Serzichas also shot down anyone who wanted to marry their daughter to the red dragon emperor, or anyone who wanted to have the white dragon empress marry their son, since they are not devils 1 and 2 angering a dragon is the worst mistake one can make, even the council supported Serzichas. The day was special since Issei was going to return to Kuo. Well Issei and his team, Invald, Lavinia and Tobio. Since Bali, her team and Artemis needs to wrap some things up, and Gabriel cannot since she is an angel, Issei was kind of hoping that would come. As he teleported outside the town he looked around three weeks he hasn't seen his family. Everyone in Issei team except Lavinia had worn casual clothes Issei wore his regular attire which old man Rizavim gave him, while Lingvold wore a white one-piece dress that ended like a skirt that came up to her knees, the dress had purple highlights. Tobia wore a black half-sleeve shirt and blue jeans and black sneakers. Lavinia wore her witch outfit saying she likes it, Issei did not complain much, but Tobio did. Issei took different turns and finally he reached where his house should be. Instead of the two-story house with blue walls, it was a six-story tall yellow building with a terrace. Ice, I did not know you were rich. Lavinia said knowing Issei was shocked as well. I asked Serzichas to expand my house a little bit. Not turn it into a mansion. How am I supposed to move around the house without a map? Issei was flabbergasted at the size of his house. Everyone laughs at Issei's statement. Issei sighed regaining his composure. Then he went to the door and rang the bell. Udo opened the door and saw Issei but couldn't recognize him. Who might you be? Udo asked politely. Your power is of a high class devil. Your training paid off. I am sad and you cannot recognize me. Issei then grinned Casanova. Issei Udo said that then calmed down a little and then continued. You're the Casanova here. I'm skip after reintroductions and tour of the house brought to you by Asia, crying a fountain that Issei returned, and Issei's parents wondering if Ingvold and Asia are twins. After introductions and reuniting, Issei was sitting on a large couch in a very large living room, along with Lavinia on his lap Tobio to his right, and Ingvold on Tobio's right. Issei was currently telling them his stories. Issei, is she is your girlfriend? Goro asked. One of them? Lavinia replied. One of them both the Hyadus shout. Issei when I am going to get grandbabies. I don't have as long as a lifespan as you so better make it quick. Nikki shouted embarrassing her son. Issei sighed, then explained to them has a total of two marked mates and three soulmates, with one of them being Gabriel and Penemu. His parents were proud of their son. They also wanted to meet their daughter-in-law soon. Time skipped to Issei going to school brought to you by Issei being hugged by his harem. Issei sighed he got the necessary paperwork and got caught up with the portions as well. Issei's parents took an extreme liking to office saying she too cute to be a dragon god feared by all of supernatural that went well. Tobio is in Yudo's class, Ingvold as well Lavinia is in Ria's class unfortunately. Hope she doesn't kill Ria's. Issei came a little early and went to student council and knocked the door getting a soft come in he twisted the door handle to see all of Sona's peerage there with Saji as well. Bam Kiba san is enough, another pretty boy will be too much. Saji commented earning a glare from Sona. Saji san I am hurt you cannot recognize your former rival. HH Haidu. Your live Saji came over and gave Issei a fist bump and a bro hug. You have changed quite a bit, but that is to be expected considering what you have done. Sona said pushing her glasses up. She wouldn't admit it, but she is happy he is alive, what Ria's did was unforgivable. Yup. I brought the paperwork for my absence, and I believe you're getting new transfer students. Issei said making Sona nod. Don't worry I will make sure Lavinia doesn't kill Ria's or the other way around. Ria's thinks she can still win you over, and is deeply in love with you, since you defeated Riser, but put it aside to belittle you to get stronger stupid reason I know. Sona said. Lavinia. As in Lavinia Rinai the Ice Princess and 5th place holder in the top 10 most beautiful woman list. Saji said in disbelief he did not expect to say to score someone like her. Yes, she is part of my team. Sona Senpai if Lavinia wants to kill Ria's I doubt you can do anything to stop it. Sure you're stronger than Ria's but not as strong as Lavinia, only Tobio or me can stop her. Issei stated. 
Sona was offended slightly, but nodded her head he was right, stopping a long Inus user is only possible in her dreams. Well then I am off. Issei said dropping a folder containing paperwork of all sorts of things, and leaving the student council. As Issei walked to his class he got stares from girls saying he was a prince, and guys were cursing him. So much for not wanting attention. He made his way to class and sat on his seat. Everyone was quiet until the teacher came in. Ah, hi Deuce and welcome back I hope your camp was fruitful, the teacher said, shocking the class on who the hot boy was. It went well sensei. Thank you for asking Issei replied politely. No way it is that beast. Damn how did he get so hot. Once a pervert always a pervert. Humph, Betty will peep again. Waste of looks I tell you. These were the comments Issei heard among others. He already told Mitsuda and Mathama that he won't go peeping with them while they were shocked Mitsuda asked he found someone he replied yes, they respected his decision and left him, promising to play at the arcade together sometime. The class went on without a hitch, except for the few glances people gave him. During math Issei answered a problem on the board with a complex formula, shocking the teacher and students alike, smarter students' prides were shattered, since they couldn't understand the formula. After the class ended Mitsuda came up to Issei. Yo, Issei when you came today there were three other stars that came. Issei rose a brow. In Kibasan's class some guy named Tobio Ikus came he is called the Prince on Shadows, as if we need another prince. Mitsuda growled and Issei smirked. In Argento-san's class a girl named Ingvold she was dubbed the Shy Princess she is friends with Argento-san. Issei sighed Mitsuda won't change. Lastly the two great one Isamas were surpassed by a single senpai her name is Lavinia Rinai. She is a goddess, since she wears a witch's hat she is known as the Enchantress Mathoma says her proportions are perfect. Mitsuda exclaims. If you two stop peeking you might get a girlfriend. Issei told the two. Unknown to them, the whole class is listening were shocked on hearing Issei of all people say that. Rumors got around school Issei looks different and is no more a pervert. Girls cheer that the perverted trio reduced by one. Well that and the new stars in Kuo Academy were big news. A signal for lunch break went off. Issei got up at stretched and packed his belongings. Their reputation was shitter than I expected, Dragon Boy. A voice cut through the room it was none other than Tobio Ikus. Come up with better nicknames, Dog God. Issei replied with a smirk. Tobio got irritated and was about to say something, but then Issei started to walk out class leaving him behind. Tobio ran after Issei who also broke into a sprint that reached speed shocking people at their speed. They both were stopped by Lavinia who stood in the middle of the corridor, Issei tripped and flew straight into Lavinia, who stepped aside letting Issei hit the floor, and Tobio fell on top of Issei, everyone watching winced at the scene that took place Lavinia started to giggle, charming every man present there except Tobio and Issei. Both of them got off the floor Issei dusted himself he could handle this since he has a stronger body, but poor Tobio's spine hurt. How are you feeling Toby kun Lavinia giggled once again. My spine I feel like a grandfather Tobio said holding his back. How was you Lavinia? Issei asked with a smile. How dare he address our goddess like that? Lavinia Sama leave the beast, he will taint you. Lavinia Sama please don't go with Haidu. IQ Sama's is in pain because of the beast. IQ Sama let me nurse you. My day was went alright my dear eyes. Dot other than a certain spoiled princess glaring at me. Lavinia said kissing Issei on the cheek which Issei returned. No. The beast captured our goddess. Lavinia Sama get away from him. I don't have a chance with the Enchantress, why did she chose Haidu of all people? One of them even fainted. That number increased rapidly. They really do hate you don't they? Lavinia said giving Issei a side glance. Issei sighed, he reminded her not expose his relationship, but she'd ignored it. All three of them went to the rooftop to see Ingvold sitting there. Lavinia hands Issei a lunch box, and they start enjoying their lunch peacefully. Until. Hey Ice Nai, Grimmery Senpai is calling you. Issa came and said. I rather not come Asia. Issei replied. She is rather persistent. I think she wants to make you jealous for getting new pieces of Rook and Knight I think. She also has two pawns she thinks your biggest mistake is you leaving the peerage. Asia sighed. Well then let's see what shit she got stored. Issei said. Be careful Issa say Nai San Lavinia, Tobio and Ingvold said respectively. Not like they are stronger than me. Thanks anyway. Issei replied giving a fist bump to Tobio head pat to Ingvold and a kiss on the cheek to Lavinia. Time skip to the occult research club brought to you by Issei getting his ass beaten by a drag who calls it training. Issei arrived at the front door of the occult research club he sighed. He is back at the place where it all began well not technically. He sighed as Asia knocked the door after hearing a come and Asia entered followed by Issei, true to her word there were four other people in the room, Murayama, Katiz, Mitsudo and Mathoma. Huh? So that is why they were so chill when they found out I am taken, they became the Germary's servants. 
Issei Saidi knew those two were ingenuine in their friendship. Um seems you're doing fine is. I do, we are not friends so you can casually address me. Issei said making Ria's frown at her former pawn statement. How dare you talk to president like that pervert. Mureyama said preparing her sword. That she could summon. The common sword sacred gear. Issei thought. Humph, a pervert like you shouldn't be in the presence of president. Katiz said glaring at Issei. Let me guess Mureyama is your knight, Katiz is your bishop, Mitsuda and Mathama are your pawns. Katiz has decent magic potential, Mureyama can summon swords, but without special qualities like Yudo, Mitsuda and Mathama have twice critical one absorbs, and the other reflects, how many pawn pieces did they take? We took four pieces, more than you can take if you became a devil. Mitsuda replied. So she did not tell them about me, huh? Keeping their loyalty I see. Issei thought. So what did you call me here for Gremory? Issei started keeping to the point. Lavinia Rinai, wielder of the Longinus, absolute demise, Tobio Iqus wielder of Longinus, Canis Lycan. Why are they here? This isn't your territory, so I have no need to answer you. Issei replied angering the four loyal pieces. But since I feel nice I will tell you. Remember the prototype pieces I was given by Beelzebub Sama? Rias nods her head. They are my peerage of sorts. Lavinia and Ingvold is my bishop, and Tobio is my rook. Ingvold is a human devil hybrid descendant of Leviathan, wielder of one of the newly manifested Longinus's Neri Kiri, it is ranked as a high tier Longinus, she is my second bishop. Rias was shocked to see that Issei's peerage comprises of Longinus users. If they were devils, she wouldn't stand against him. How in Mayu's name do you have three Longinus users? What did you do get them? Murayama shouted at him. I am wield a Longinus myself. Issei said. Shocking the four people. Which one? Mathama is jealous of Issei clearly. I am not obliged to tell you, but just so you know if you think Rias is strong then you're wrong. You're saying I am weak, Rias shouted angrily insulted by him. The four loyal pieces tried to attack him for insulting Rias. Issei, raised his aura to the point everyone were on their knees except Asia. Know your place, Devil's Issei's face did not change one bit, but his voice was draconic, cold and emotionless. You can't even stand when I release my aura. Rias I assume you didn't tell them about your former pawn and what my scared gear is. Issei said returning to his normal persona. Asia can you tell Kaneko her elder sister is no more a devil, and she went out of control excuse as a lie. Issei told Asia as he was leaving the room to which Asia nodded her head. I'm skipped to Issei returning home brought to you by Chibi Mitsuda and Mathoma pissing their pants seeing Issei's power. Issei was walking home alone since Lavinia went to Grigori since she wanted to check in on Penemu, Engvold went as well, Tobio went with Yudo together to hang out. Issei was walking home he felt a powerful presence in his home much stronger than him or office during its prime, but the presence held no hostility, so he sighed. This is going to be troublesome. He opened the door to his large home with six floors and three basements, first one for magical training, second one for physical training, the third it can be used for who knows what probably meeting room. Issei went to the living room seeing office eating sweets quietly with his parents slightly sweating, there was an awkward expression on both of them. The presence he sensed earlier was sitting there. She wore a red chiangsum with gold that came up to her ankles, the dress showed her bare legs, and she had a very beautiful figure much more beautiful than Artemis, who held the second place in the top 10 most beautiful woman list. She had crimson red eyes porcelain white skin with silver hair that come up to her back with bangs on her forehead she stood at 5'10". He felt the same when he met Gabriel and Penemu, this must be his third soulmate. I say you're back someone here is to see you. Do you know her? Mickey said she was slightly relieved when Issei came. She did not know the person who visited, but did not know how to deal with supernatural beings. Office can you get mom and dad out of here I wish to speak to this person alone. Though if you know her any information is helpful. Issei said Mac and Office nod. She is Isabella Osa who is also known as Trahixa 666 God of the Bible, died trying to seal her. She is on par with Baccarat and stronger than me. Surprising to see she is your soulmate, she is the top spot holder in the top 10 most beautiful woman list, she is also known as the strongest and most beautiful woman, I think she wants to talk for obvious reasons. This is her human form by the way. Office mentally communicated making a say nod his head. No need to leave this place, I will take him somewhere to talk. Isabella spoke in a regal tone, but held a tint of warmth. Sure, that seems coinvent. But let me change into something more comfortable. Issei replied unlike her he was causal. Issei left to his room change. Both of his parents were slightly, but Afa said something that got a 180 degree reaction. She is Issei's third soulmate. Few words can make a world of difference, well in this case it was true. Mickey, how many daughter-in-laws do we already have? Goro was proud of his son getting a harem, but can't help get excited when it grew. One. Two. 
3, 4 and now 5. F5 daughter-in-laws, so many grandchildren Mickey was giddy on how many grandchildren she was going to spoil. They took it a lot better than I expected. Office said chewing on a cookie or Arthur cutely floating next to Isabella. Better the expected. What was their normal reactions? Isabella sweat dropped at her in-laws reactions. They wouldn't care who you are. They would care about you like their own daughter, their compassion is second to none. Isabella, quell your worries as say will treat you without prejudice, nor will the people close to him. I swear on my name as the Auroboros, they will not mistreat you. Office said looking into Isabella's eyes with a small smile. Isabella was shocked to see Office not only display so much trust but emotion as well. Well if you're ready we can leave. Can I call you Isabella? Isabella nodded taking a look at Issei. Issei wore white t-shirt green cargo pants tucked in red combat boots with a black jacket around his waist. He looked good in her eyes. Isabella went next to Issei, and a black and dark violet circle opened underneath them, Issei waved at his parent goodbye. Issei and Isabella arrived at a forest. Issei was enchanted by its beauty, he explored vast amounts of the planets and has seen many things, but this takes the cake. Unknown to him Isabella changed forms, from her human form to her original form. This is the forest of life first generation gods are born here like, Zeus, Odin and biblical god as well. Nobody comes here since I stay here, the biblical god tried to seal me, but got so exhausted that he died after he sealed me temporarily. Isabella said. Am, you must be pretty lonely. They avoid you because of your power, that is just shit really. I have no words to comfort you, sorry. Issei then turned around to see Isabella in her true form. He was slightly taken aback he did not expect this, but he was expecting the unexpected, so that doesn't count. A smile came up on his face. Don't change forms without tell me. My heart cannot take it, here I thought you cannot get more beautiful, but you proved me wrong, huh? Issei's smile turned turned into a smirk a playful one. Smooth bastard. Issei did not understand Drake slight jealously. Isabella was shocked not one person called her beautiful in her true form, many men tried to claim her even both the heavenly dragons tried to, that is why they had the rivalry to see who would win to claim her and Tiamat, well we know how that ended. But this man in front of her is neither afraid of her not enchanted by her, but gives an affectionate gaze with no hint of lust and obsession. Office's words ran through her mind. Pervert or no pervert, with me or without me you will fall in love with him. I swear on my name as the Auroboros. Office held the name Auroboros with pride as much as it valued silence, so that was a very bold statement. Without saying a word she walked forward ignoring Issei's confused gaze, and held his chin with her index and thumb lifted his face up to meet his eyes, then she locked her lips onto his. Issei's eyes widened he did not expect this not one bit. Before he could do anything Isabella forced her tongue into his mouth, exploring it in detail Issei gave up and let her continue, it did feel nice. Braid was crying, yeah he is going to ask Isabella why is this happening. Eventually she parted with a thick trail of saliva connecting the two, Issei was shocked, trying to comprehend the actions of the strongest woman to walk. Isabella moved to Issei's neck and bit down hard enough to draw a few droplets of blood come out Issei winced in pain, Isabella started to suck the blood coming while kissing the neck. Issei felt a weird feeling over there, he did not want to push Isabella out for unknown reasons. She is marking you. Before you ask, Isabella can chose who can she mark as her husband, Valina and Isabella, now share the position as the alpha in your harem. Since you're a very powerful dragon you can have up to four alphas in your harem. Females you marked can bite you to apply for the position of alpha. You're now the husband of the Valina Lucifer, Gabriel, Penemu, Lavinia Renai, Isabel and probably going to be Artemis soon, well by dragon standards at least. Drake told Issei, though you could tell he was jealous and was proud as well, he was not going to blame him. Isabella pulled out of Issei's neck and wiped her mouth retaining her poker face, Issei on the other hand blushed. I never thought I would be the wife of the host of Drake. Isabella said in slight disbelief. Do you know Drake before he got sealed? Issei was curious, Isabella sighed. Bessie did not tell you huh? You see the heavenly dragons were rivals before Tiamat and I crossed paths with them. After that both of them wanted to claim Tiamat who is the strongest female dragon, and me who is the strongest female as their mates both of us declined them, but they did not care they fraud each other, to the point that the winner gets both of us, Isabella was cut off. Did not expect to fight between the battlefield of the Great War for this disgusting reason. Drake, I hope this doesn't happen again. Issei was furious, Isabella is impressed again he was turning out better and better than she hoped. I learned my lesson ever since I saw you I began to feel even more guiltier and guiltier, that Albion and I let pride get the better of us. I plan to apologies to Tiamat and Isabella together, but I will do it now. Isabella Osa, I regret my actions deeply, and no amount of words can convey the guilt I feel, but till I can express them in words, I am sorry. I hope you don't take your hate from me on my partner he has no part in this. 
Drake's message was sincere if one could see he was bowing his head down. The say side Drake's problems were a lot more than expected well he is going to fix them over time. I acknowledge your apology Drake, quell your worries, I will not treat my husband antagonistically, because he is your host. Yes, I have just met him, but I will give him my affection unconditionally. Her face softened a bit, Issei was blushing a lot, for various things she said. Well let's get back, but first change into something that will not be out of place. Well you are beautiful in any form most humans are unaware in the supernatural. Issei said trying not to offend her. She understood it as well, having his mark means she could tell how he feels, so she understood she did not want to hurt her feelings. Isabella took on her human form, she wore a purple overcoat with black tight pants and light purple skin tight sleeveless t-shirt and a loose belt around the waist, she wore black combat heels and a sword on her side. Issei's jaw dropped, she was stunning. A smirk came up on Isabella's lips she walked to Issei placing her hand on his cheek. You better return it. She whispered closing the gap between them Issei could feel her breath on his nose. Issei once again got caught off guard when he felt Isabella's soft lips on his own, he understood Isabella's words and returned the kiss. Isabella wrapped her arms around his neck, bringing herself close her husband's body pressing her soft breasts against his chest, Issei pulled her closer to him by her waist, which he wrapped his arms around, Isabella's hand trailed down to his chest, as she felt Issei asking permission to enter into her. Parting her lips she felt Issei's tongue slippin, she shuddered at the feeling both of them fought for dominance Isabella submitted, he explored her mouth taking in every detail she gave an appreciative moan. The kiss continued for a few minutes, before they parted with a thick string of saliva connecting them. Satisfied I did return what you gave me. Issei whispered into her ear while bringing her into a hug. Isabella melted into Issei's hug and gave a nod placing her forehead on his collarbone. A smile came up onto her face she can get used to this warmth, she was alone for most of her life, but now she has a say it was only one person, but it was a start. Reluctantly Issei pulled out placing his hand on her cheek and trailed to the back of her neck and placed his forehead on hers and smiled, she was slightly taken aback, but soon melted into it. They were enjoying each other's company until office came in. Two angels came to the house. Zenobia and Arena came with two Excalibur fragments. Mimic and Destroyer I believe. Office said with a smirk. You ruined the moment on purpose didn't you? Issei deadpanned releasing Isabella. Office smirked reached her ear which means Issei is right. I don't remember Office being this troublesome. Does it have to do with fusing with you? Isabella said turning to her husband who was contemplating the same question. Issei sighed in the world will never know. I don't know. Time skipped to Issei reaching his house or well, mansion brought to you by Chibi office, breaking the door down with a smirk brimming with pride and Issei with his harem screaming at the top of their lungs being caught while having sex. Drake. Well he is nodding his head in disapproval like an old grandpa. Issei walked in seeing Zenovia and Irina in church robes. Irina is socially dead, both of his parents were laughing on the floor rolling around, and Zenovia had a smirk that rivaled office when it's up to mischief. He sighed. You seem to be in a jolly mode. Issei made his presence known. Ah hi Dukun, nice to see you again. Hello Issei. Irina was dead. Confirmed. So what brings you here? Kakabiel I assume. Both of them nodded their heads. We will meet the Gremory group unfortunately, except Asia-san and Kiba-san, they are nice since they are more powerful than the Citri group. So we were asked to confront the Gremory group Gabriel Sama had the most disgusted face I have ever seen, even Michael Sama was angry, muttering why those who hurt brother-in-law are something around those lines. Irina said in a fluctuating tone distaste at the name of his former master lied at the mention of Asia and Yudo's name and curious at the mention of Gabriel and Michael. I do miss Gabriel a lot. I wish she was here. Issei thought with a sigh. By the way hi Dukun what is your relationship with Gabriel Sama? Zenovia questioned. Glad she isn't calling me revered hi do Issei now. Issei thought before answering the question vaguely he did not want to say he and Gabriel are lovers. Yet close. Though Michael's mumbling is something I am not sure. Issei said it was vague, but it was enough to convince them. Who is handling the money you got? Irina Zenovia replied. She has no sense in managing money, there is a reason her parents never gave her pocket money. Issei said with a deadpan expression. For the first time ever two angels shared a room with a devil, Asia. Though there were spare rooms Issa insisted they share a room with her being believers in God they agreed. If the old Mag faction hears this they are going to blow. Time skipped to the occult research club with Irina chained like a mad dog as she was on the verge of killing Riaz. Poor Zenovia is being healed by Asia after Irina lashed out at her for trying to stop her. Issei on the other hand was Irina more dragon than he was blasphemy. Riaz and her group were on the couch facing the windows Riaz was the only one sitting on the couch with her servants behind even Akeno. Treating peerage like family bullshit. 
Irina, Zinovia, Tobio and Lavinia were sitting on the couch. Issei was leaning on the wall crossing his hands, and Asia and Yuda were next to the couch. So why are two exorcists here? Rhea's questioned with authority, before Irina or Zinovia could say anything Issei replied. Zona Senpai already knows why so there is no need for them to answer you. This prompted the glare from Murayama, Katiz, Mitsuda and Mathama, Issei ignored them and continued, there will be something coming up regarding Excalibur fragments, and I will be taking Yudo and Asia for the mission. Issei finished. Now why would I lend my cute servants to you of all people? Rhea's questioned emphasizing her disdain for Issei. It is a matter do you want another great war or not? If you don't lend them then it can be counted you betraying your faction, since the outcome of the exorcist's mission will determine if the great war will reignite. Sona Senpai's peerage members are not up to the mark as of yet otherwise I would ask their help. Issei said with utmost seriousness. I will not endanger my cute servants. Rhea said taking a sip of her tea. She is a spoiled princess through and through, not endangering servants you bullshit. She just doesn't want them to reach high class and leave her peerage, since she wants strong members. Issei thought while well, Drake snorted in agreement. Rhea's Sama is very kind. Yes she is Murayama it is that the beast doesn't understand. Issei you should listen to President Rhea's, if you had a long eyeness you should have joined her not oppose her. Yes, I agree with Mitsuda. I don't think you heard me right Gremory. I will be taking them your opinion doesn't matter, you want to hold them back from reaching high class and leaving your peerage aren't you? Serzich's was the one who recommended I take them, I am just informing you. Just so you your brother will choose the faction over you, he isn't going to risk another great war, if deeming you astray will stop another war between the three factions, then he will do it without a thought even Seraphil will do the same, and Sona Senpai knows it. Issei said with a smirk as Rias was pissed. I told I won't lend you my servants. Rhea said rising her aura by a lot everyone on her side backed away a little since they cannot handle it, everyone else were unfazed. Issei sighed Rias won't understand so easily so he let his aura loose. As Issei's aura flooded the room it completely nullified Rhea's aura, but it was also so strong that the windows broke, the walls started to crack, Mitsuda, Mathama, Murayama and Katz have a hard time breathing, Akeno was turned on, Kaneko was shaking in fear, Rhea's herself was shocked. Would he have gotten this strong if I had more patience with him? Yes, he would have gotten this strong, over time I made a mistake leaving him. Shit. There is no way to get him back at all Rhea's thought. The tables started to burn, and the teacups exploded if Issei's aura continued then surely they will die. You have no say in this heiress of Gremory, I will not let you interfere in this mission. Issei's voice was draconic as his eyes had slits like a dragon fangs were more visible. Issei retracted his aura his features returned to normal, many sighs of relief were heard, and a sigh of disappointment from Akeno she was horny and Issei could smell it. Shirin. Issei said Kaneko's eyes widened she felt her heart stop. Hiroka is proven innocent, her former master was doing illegal experiments on her and was planning to do them on you in order to create a super devil. She killed him in order to keep you safe, yes it doesn't seem like the best idea, but she was more or less elaborate. Ignoring your heritage will have many consequences. I don't think Rhea's told you she was announced innocent did she? Kaneko looked at Issei's eyes he was telling the truth. One Isama is innocent. Sinjutsu isn't bad. Why did not president tell me? Kaneko thought panicking. So what I did not tell her since Kuroka's location is unknown. Rias lied through her teeth, but Issei wasn't going to let this go. Kuroka is a rook in Valina Lucifer's peerage, it is widely known that the Lucifer family were neutral until a month ago they joined the underworld. But the Devil Council has no right over them. Issei clarified. She wants me for herself. She did not tell me. Shirin thought in anger. Issei senpai. Yes Shirin. Would it be possible for me to leave Rias peerage and join your group? Shirin said shocking everyone. Think this through Kaneko Rias was cut off. Shirin, my name is Shirin, not Kaneko. Shirin glared at Rias shocking everyone present. Um? We can try, if it works then, it works, if it doesn't then, it doesn't. There won't be any consequences. Issei had a thoughtful expression you're beginning to accept yourself I won't deny your freedom like Rias did mine. I promised Karoka. I will protect her. Issei smiled. Step forward Shirin, there will be no turning back. Issei said pulling out the most beautiful rook piece to be never seen. Everyone was mesmerized by the piece. Shirin stepped forward with a determined face. Rias was in despair and Akeno was sad, the four loyal pieces were glaring at Issei for causing Rias despair, but they also have starting to doubt their master well, except for the perverts. In theory the stronger piece will take dominance over the weaker piece, so my piece will stay Rias will get expelled, so you will become a Nekashu once again. The process might sting a bit, but don't take my word for it. Shirin nodded at Issei's explanation. 
The Sane never hated the Gremory Peerage his only problem is the Peerage Master, but he doesn't hate her, but has extreme dislike, since she is responsible for him being introduced to the supernatural and meeting the people he did. He placed a piece in both of Shirin's hands which were joined together, Shirin brought the piece to her chest and held it she closed her eyes. A bright light enveloped the room as the light died down Shirin was the same as she was. I fell. Lighter. She stated. Opening her palm she found a piece an evil piece. A smile came on Shirin's face and Rhea's face contracted into anger. A sigh of relief escaped his say's lips loud enough for everyone to hear. Oh great the process is painless. If it was Yudo or Asia it would have been more painful since they were humans before becoming devils, so the process from changing from devil to human and human to god will kill them. Issei explained. Of course Rias wasn't happy with such a powerful peace leave. Yudo and Asia already are going to become high class soon, now Shirin is gone only Akeno was her only valuable piece, but she doesn't use her power. The exorcists, Issei and his team, Yudo and Asia, leave the club room to plan for welcoming Kakabiel. That's it guys. Well, I could just say that is the last part, since the author just left the story and his while account. Well maybe, hopefully, in the future, maybe there will be more parts. With that, take care.